I put all this stuff in here. All the branches back in here. Yeah. Just to make it so that anybody coming in, I can hear them. And I can get up and be ready for, you know, whatever. And my front, this is the only way in and out. Yeah. Just through here. Yeah, I will, if you want to walk out, I will close the door. No, no, no. I'm fine. Okay. Or unless you want to. Well, wanna... I want to show you how it's. Sure. Yeah. If you walk out and then uh, I'll show you okay. how I close the door. Well, and then I got a rope on it here. So I close it up. And then oh I have gosh. a rope that I pull on the inside. This I put up here, but I pull this on the inside all the way into my tent. So anybody pulling this out, it's I'm gonna feel it. Right. And I'm gonna get up. Cause I don't wanna be caught, you know, and I got it, uh, and I, I made, I'm making doors for everybody. And I just made the frame, this is old one, and I wired it all up together. And this part here is in the ground with a empty can of, beans or whatever that way it swivels on that and yeah. how long have you been here I've been here I've been up in the park for three years now I've been in this spot for about a year and uh, you know just uh, had to I have to make it as much as home as possible I have my coffee table my you know I cook out here uh when it's warm but as you can see there's no ceilings over it so in the summertime it's okay yeah but in the winter time i have to dig trenches for the rain runoff you know and a secure place for my whatever i have what little i have secure enough to nobody's going to come in here you can't come in you, you know you can but who's going to want to come in to just to steal clothes nobody well, they don't know what's in here. They don't know what's in the, here. All of a sudden, they they think yeah. it's a gold mine. You well, know? yeah, uh, um, but you know, I have um, a camera that I have aimed here in case you know anything is taken. Then I know who did it. Oh, you have a security camera? Yeah, just a time lapse. Just oh a wow! Quick camera. How do you keep uh, that powered up? <laughs> by the orange line. Okay. What's the there. orange line? Well, that's uh, where we power our phones, our cell phones. Okay. And whatever else we have, you know, our radios, our lights, you know, everything of mine is uh, is USB, you know, port. So right, my phone, right. my I got a headlamp for my bike, and you know, because batteries are just after a while they're too expensive, and if you buy them at the ninety nine cent store, uh, they don't last long. <laughs> they don't last long. So, well, this is no place for anybody to live. No, it's not. But you know what? Where are we going to go? On the boulevard? On Ventura? Uh, uh, on on Van, Van Nuys Boulevard? You have to bring your tents down in the morning, and then you can pop them up at night. So, you know, and as long as it's not blocking a, a, a business or blocking wheelchairs from getting through. But I can't, I can't do that. My, my, you know, I'm not young anymore. I'm not 20 years old anymore. I can't drop my tent every night, every morning and just go out and walk around. Yeah. So we have to go out and walk around all day long. You know, I don't know how people do it. Actually. I, I don't, I, I don't see how they do it. I have to have, uh, I have, I set, I had to set everything up. I have to have it as much as home because if I don't, then I might as well just turn into a drug addict and just, well, just veg away in my little dome tent. I can't do that. So how long have you, so how did you end up homeless? I ended up homeless because I had a boyfriend in San Diego that uh, my boss first, my boss died. So I moved from his property. I worked for him for 10 years, I took care of his horses. And then on the side I broke horses and I, you know, and, uh, fixed the broken horses. <laughs> And uh, so I met somebody, and he, him and his little brother, wiped me clean. I mean, you know, uh, had me evicted somehow, one way or another. Uh, um, had me evicted, and he got a re he got a rental agreement. He got to stay on the property. I had to leave. And uh, so my brother, uh, a real good friend of mine, I called my brother, came from Idaho Falls and picked me up. And I went out there for a year, and I just said I got to. 
it's just not happening. My feet are, my feet are uh, way, you know, getting bad. I get, I, I need to see doctors for my feet. I can't do what I normally do. Right. Uh, so I had to come back here. And when I came back here after moving away 25 years ago, I just could not believe the homeless. And I went to my ex-husband in here in Van Nuys, and I said, "Hey, I got a problem. I'm out of work, and and uh, I need a place to stay." And he said, "No, God, we were married 18 years." But cirrhosis does a lot to a man's brain, or a person's brain. I guess he didn't remember anything from our past, so. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so I couldn't stay there because, you know, just. <laughs> and uh, everybody I knew 25 years ago is gone. You know, nobody left here, so I was kind of stuck on the street. Went to the church, found out about, you know, the park. Came, set up a little tent, and I said, well, this I can do, you know, as long as I get somewhere to, that I can cook a meal at the end of the day, you know, from going to and from doctors or Cornerstone or, you know, yeah. back and forth, and, you know, I, I my stuff, because I can't drag all this stuff around. I'm not going to push a shopping cart and look more homeless because your average uh, blue-collar man that's got a job, has a house, has a car, PTA, soccer mom, soccer dad, they all look at the homeless as, oh, they're going to catch something. <laughs> they look at the homeless like um, we're, they're better than us. And I made $70 an hour. I wasn't better than them and they're not better than me. It's a bad turn of events that snowballed into this. Living in a tent. Living in a tent trying to get doctors to fix my feet and, and get this, you know, because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to draw off of the system forever. I want to work. I want to go to work and come home tired at the end of the day and have a meal and watch TV. Like normal people. Like normal. What's normal? I'm more normal than some of them fools out there. But, you know, Bad term of events uh, brought me here, and I've had to, you know, you just make do with what you have. You know, you cannot, there's, you know, LAPD and, and, and rangers out here that you cannot just push a shopping cart through town wondering where you're going to go to the bathroom because nobody will let you use their bathrooms. You can't use a jack-in-the-box or McDonald's bathroom unless it's everything's locked unless you bought food there. Right. So what do you do? You take to the sidewalk, you take to the street, you take to a bucket. I can't walk, you know, push a shopping cart. I have to be somewhere where I'm uh, private. How are the police out here? They're, uh, they're, the uh, rangers, you know, the rangers are pretty much, they're okay because it's, it's their job to put site, you know, site 24 hour notice. It's not legal to, to be camped here. It's illegal to, you know, have a fire pit, but you have to cook food. So where's the humanity in that? You know, I mean, they're pretty much okay. You know, they they don't like doing this, and and I was told by one or two of them that you know what we don't like this, but we have to do this our job. And or I've had one or two come in and say, you know what, clean it up. But I don't have to clean it up. My place is clean. Yeah. Uh, you know, a uh, hot. How would you feel if you were homeless and your place is a mess, yeah. you got shopping carts everywhere, for a man in uniform to come tell a grown person, clean up your shit, yeah. clean up your mess. Yeah. You can't have it like this. You know what? If we didn't blatantly, if they, not me, I'm sorry, I, 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 my place is clean, blatantly throw liquor bottles all over the place and, uh, you know, I can't, I can't look into the camera because, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I got uh, because it. Because I'm, I'm very, you know... Uh, yeah, it's fine. But if, I mean, if we don't, they don't blatantly do their dope in front of, you know, people that are jogging, you know, up and down and with their kids on the weekends and blatantly throw liquor bottles and, you know, cuss and, and yelling this back, you know, they'd have a little bit more empathy. The police, LAPD, and, and the rangers would be, have a little bit more empathy on being homeless right. because we're not all, you know. You're not here by choice. We're not, I'm not here by choice. 
a lot of people are. They'd rather be here so they can spend most of their money on everything else but rent. For myself, I'd rather pay rent than live in a tent. Yeah. And no matter where I live, you know, uh, I will keep it clean as I can. I will not blatantly, uh, in front of, you know, uh, at the orange line where we're charging our phone, blatantly be drinking and, and just, you know, uh, making homeless people look bad. Yeah. <laughs> and homeless people like that give homeless people like me a bad name. Yeah. And they're just surviving. And though. they're surviving. That's you all. Know, you know, they, it's you know people use drugs yeah, to yeah. cope with to trauma cope with, and yeah. homelessness. And I can sucks. see that running into a, a snowball effect because yeah. it happened to me. Yeah. Uh, with heroin, I've been clean from heroin 29 years, but I, you know I can recall back when I was 20. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it snowballed into an effect that you know I just don't give a shit. And congratulations and, on 29. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's that's uh, no easy feat. No. What would you want people to know about homelessness that they probably don't know? Uh, 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 people, your, your soccer moms and soccer dads and the PTA, those kind of people, we are not any less of a person than you are. You're not any more than we are. We're all the same. We put our pants on the same way. It's one paycheck away from being homeless, and that's all it takes. And then once you're here, it's like, Oh, well, I might as well get high tonight because, you know, uh, it can't get any worse than this. And then that'll snowball. And everything snowballs into, you know, where you're carrying around your sleeping bag on your shoulders. You know, I never thought that I'd be homeless. I saw my mom. I told my mom, I said, Mommy, that old man, I was 10 years old. Mommy, that old man picked something off the ground and he lit it stuck it in his mouth and he was smiling and he lit it and I think it was a cigarette she says well honey it must have been his brand that's why he was smiling 40 50, 45 years later I found myself looking on the ground for cigarette butts and sure enough I found one and I was smiling I wiped off the filter a little bit and I lit it and I was smiling because it was my brand yeah. so my first job here <laughs> my first job I uh, my car broke down and I had to take uh, uh, the bus and uh, first time taking a bus in a big city. And a homeless guy got on with a bucket of fish. And the seat only, you know, everybody started putting their bags so the homeless guy wouldn't sit next to him. And I'm not like that, right? So he sat next to me and it was a horrible experience. I didn't ride the bus again until I became that homeless man. And I remember I had to get on the bus and walking down as a homeless man and everybody was putting something next to the so seat you didn't sit next so to I him. wouldn't sit next to him. You know, it's funny how life changes like that. Yeah, it, you know what? It could change you in an instant. You don't have uh, money to pay rent. That's all it takes is money to pay rent, whether you're collecting from the government or you're working for, you know, if that's gone, then yeah. what are you going to do? You are going to try to survive. You're, we're all human. We are all a domesticated animal, not used to the bitter elements. So what do you do? You put, build a lean-to, you build a tent, you get a tarp, you get cardboards, anything to keep yourself warm at night. Make a security gate. Make a security gate. Now, I went a little farther, and I, you know, I, I have to because right. I'm 60 now, and I cannot be in a little, you know, cardboard box I can't do it because then, then I might as well just start getting high at night and, and just or every day and yeah. all day might as well just start doing that because what do I have left so yeah. I'm you know I felt positive about tomorrow the next day the next day I do the same thing again I have to get five gallon you know what we work harder homeless people work harder than anybody with an eight-hour job because when we get up in the morning we are trying to decide what we're gonna have to eat for that day or just that day at all water where we're going to go to the bathroom we work harder than anybody with an eight-hour job yeah absolutely do how and far do you have to walk for water about a mile um each to, way it, it, yeah I, I guess it's about a mile from yeah. where i am um with five gallons if i don't have a cart to you know put it on and pull it up the hill then I get to the orange line and wait, you know, hopefully I have cigarettes to trade. Can you bring this up the hill for me? You know, um, 
And there's no days off. No. That's what people no. don't understand. Eight there's no vacation week. days. No. There's no personal leave. No. 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 So. Not at all. We do it every day. Every morning you wake up, you know, I myself do my chores. I've always have. And, uh, or you look for the next bag of dope. Right. To be honest with you, uh, I'm not in that plane anymore. Uh, Thank God. Yeah. So let's talk about something a little nicer, lighter. I met you on a movie set, a movie that's going to be about your life. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't how think how do you feel about that? I didn't think my life was that interesting. What I, not now, it's not interesting, but evidently they seem to think it is um, because of, uh, of everything that I did before becoming homeless. Um, can't do it now, but it, 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 to them it was interesting because it's gonna be a, uh, a short film. A virtual reality, virtual actually. virtual reality where you put your headset on, you go into my tent, you get personal with me so that that soccer mom and soccer dad look at it and go, wow, this person really had a life before and now yeah. it's torn away. These LAPD, they're just wicked. They're mean and they're yeah. nasty. Uh, I got my campsite over here, just, you know, two clicks away, torn away by an LAPD officer that came in and I, I, I was out, I ran out and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, I got my pills over there for my stomach and uh, my jacket and my cane. So I went back in and, and I was telling him, you know, he's cutting into my tent with this evil, vindictive, oh, almost so sinister sorry. way that he's cutting into it. But wait, the door's open. You're here to push us out, not pillage through my personal belongings. Oh this God. is my home, H-O-M-E. You have to have a warrant in anybody's home. You have to have a warrant to go in and search there. I don't give a shit if I'm here illegally or not. It's still a home, H-O-M-E, it's yeah. still my home. So he had everything sprawled out, and this is what the beginning of this film I did is about, you know, uh, about we, ha we are human beings. Yep. We are a domesticated animal. Have, we have a right to do things in private, to go to the bathroom in private, to, uh, you know, lay our heads somewhere, you know, have warm. Have some dignity. And have some dignity. These guys don't give a shit. They come in and rip your tents up Oh, now where are we going to go? On the sidewalk where we have to lower the, you know, we have to move because people with their businesses don't, you know. Yeah. And a stray dog, you can see a stray dog with a limp and his hair matted walking down the sidewalk in Van Nuys and have the store person come out and give that dog a fresh, clean pan of water. But we ask for water wow. for our cup. We don't get it. Wow. And they will give that stray dog pan of water. Where's wow. your humanity? This is a bird sanctuary we're at this park. It's a yeah. bird sanctuary. They got a sanctuary for birds because who knows if that's their last of the species. Yeah. Who knows if that, I'm the last of my species. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're soon uh, to be in housing. Yes. Thanks to LA Family Housing. LA Family Housing. And thank uh, you for Eric. Eric. Who introduced daughter. us and Rose. Yes, and Rose. The, so my favorite part on the set was like Emily was just here. Yes. And she was the producer. And they don't normally connect to homelessness. No. But they loved on you. And now it's just natural. They're coming to visit you at your I tent. I know. You know, these are you know, Hollywood people. Yeah. And yeah. they're coming to see you. Because they know now it's not just, you know, it's not just dirt and grime and we're dirty people and we're yeah. drug-induced people. And they see now, they see there's people here that have... They're well educated. There's a guy over here that plays amazing guitar. He speaks five languages. Just a little turn of event that caused his homelessness. Could happen to anybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. And these LA LA family housing, when they come out and grab your hand to shake your hand, they pull you in and kiss you on the cheek. You haven't had a shower in a week. You don't smell that great, but they're still. Awesome. They still pull you in yeah. and hug you. And they do as they say they're going to do. And, Great. They're, and, they're, and you know what? It might be real hard for them because of the paper, uh, the paperwork and the, the, the red tape and the bureaucracy. Uh, amazing. They can still make it back here with snacks, yeah. socks, and water. 
So if you had three wishes, what would they be? I would have a, uh, a, a wishbone. A wishbone? <laughs> and a funny bone and a backbone. <laughs> You're going to have to explain that. <laughs> well, a wishbone so that you have your wish, you know, anything, you know. And a backbone so that you can stand up tall and deal with your average, uh, you know, jogging person or, you know, somebody that's got a home, PTA moms, have a backbone for that, stand up straight and tall, so I'm homeless, but you hold your head high. And uh, a funny bone, <laughs> laugh it off, because yeah. at the end of the day, you're still homeless, and you have to, oh. have to, yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. You're welcome very much. For and it's an honor to, to meet me. you. I have never heard anybody say it's an honor to meet you. That just blows me away. <laughs> My pleasure.